What's going on everybody? My name is Rico. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are, you know, I really want to change this intro. I have no idea how I gotta change it or what I want to change, but I keep doing the same routine in every video and obviously it's fun. It's very recognizable. Like what's going on everybody? My name is Rico. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my channel is about vlogs, series and tutorials. And then say the whole same thing over and over again. Maybe you guys can help me. Do you like me using this intro at the beginning of every video, introducing myself, saying what my channel is about, and then saying what this video is about? Or do you just want me to start with the video or do something else? Or let me know in the comment section down below. I'm very curious. But for this video, we are going to change an image into a drawing. And here you have it. This is the image that we're going to work with. It's an image I've shot during our trip to Switzerland. It's taken at the Ocean and Say, which is the blue lake over here. Uh, let me show you guys the end result real quick. So I already took a snapshot of that. Let me select it. Boom, there you have it. So this is the end result. And on the right side is the original image. So now you can see it's a photo. But if you move it to the side like so, it looks like someone has drawn this or painted it or whatever. So let me deselect the snapshot. Let me select the original layer. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to get rid of the vignetting over here. And for that, we're going to use the lens correction module. I've put all the modules that we're going to use in my favorites. If you don't see them over here, please go to more modules and then find them in the list down below. Let me close that down and let's start. So let's open up the lens correction module. And this module automatically recognizes the camera that this image has been shot with, which is the Panasonic GH5 and the lens that I've used, which is the 12 to 60 Leica. But we do need to click this and we need to go to Leica and we need to select it again in order for the lens correction module to be applied. So let's close that one down and let's move on to the next one, which is the chromatic aberrations module. And I want to use that because sometimes on the edges you get like purple fringing or green fringing or something's just a little bit off. So let me activate it and now the edges look a lot more clean. So let me put it back on fit the screen and let's use the next module, which is the demosaic module. And for those of you who have followed me along know that I like to use the method of a maze because that tends to work best with my Panasonic GH5, but you can use anything in the list down below. So let's close that one down. And now we're going to the basic adjustments module. If you don't have this one because I'm using 2.7. So if you're using, let's say 2.6. Okay, so I'm using 2.7. You guys are not, but guess what? I've made it available for you guys with the help of Todd Pryor. I'll put his link of his email in the description down below. So if you've got any questions about 2.7 or if it doesn't work, just send him an email ask him for help and he will help you. I've talked it through with him. I'm very glad that he made this build available for us. Please keep in mind that this build is for Windows users only. So if you use Windows, you can download the files, you can install it, you can start using Darktable 2.7. Please keep in mind to back up the files that you have, the styles, the presets, because sometimes things aren't backwards compatible. So if 2.7 doesn't work for you and you want to go back to 2.6.2 or something we're at right now, uh, those files might not work anymore. So just create a folder, put everything of Darktable that you have in it, and then install 2.7, check and see if it works. And if it works, you can delete the other files or do whatever with them. Make sure you keep your styles obviously and your uh, presets, but I wanted to make it available for you guys. Now there is, so I don't have to explain to you guys anymore that if we use the basic correction module, uh, you can go to the exposure module for certain parts or so the contrast, brightness and saturation. You will hear me talk about that thing in this tutorial because I've actually shot this tutorial before I make the sequence. So, but, but due to the help of Todd, I can now make 2.7 available for you guys as well. So I hope you guys like it. Let's continue with the tutorial. You can change the black level in the exposure module. You can change the exposure in the exposure module and you can change the contrast, brightness and saturation in the contrast, brightness and saturation module. But for this tutorial, because I'm using 2.7, I'm going to use this basic adjustment module. Let me activate it. 
And I want to change the black point a little bit. So I want this to move to the left. So for that, I'm going to increase the black point by scrolling the mouse wheel button two clicks away from me. I want to adjust the exposure a little bit because the image is a little bit overexposed. So let me hit the right mouse button minus zero dot, let's say 25. That darkens the image a little bit, but that doesn't matter because we will be brightening it up a little bit later. But we're going to use a different module for that. I want to add a fair bit of contrast. So for that, I'm going to hit the right mouse button again. 0.25 in this case. It's a very strong effect. The image becomes a lot more dark after applying this. But don't worry, we'll fix that in a minute. It's just to give the image a little bit more pop. I'm going to adjust the middle gray point a little bit. And that brightens up the image a little bit as well. And the rest, I'm just going to keep the brightness as is, but I am going to increase the saturation by 0.10. And now you see that the greens have become a little bit more green. Let me show you guys a before and after. So I'm going to deactivate the module. And this is the image before we apply the module. And if I activate it, then this is the end result after applying the module. Now let's go to the next module, which is the haze removal module. And it's a very, very strong effect. But we are going to decrease the strength of this effect. But first we're going to open it. We're going to activate it. And there you go. Look at that. Look how strong it is. So let me deactivate it. And let me activate it. There you go. Now I want to decrease the strength. I can do that by hitting the right mouse button. And then fill in let's say half. So 0.25. And now the effect has decreased by 50%. But what we can do as well is, let's put it back to 0.50. Click this symbol right here, which stands for uniformly. And then change the opacity to 50%. And that gives you the exact same effect. So I'm going to keep this as is. I'm going to close down this module. And I'm going to the next module, which is the local contrast module. And for those of you who have watched my channel and my videos over the past few months know that I absolutely love this module and I absolutely love 150%. But in this case, I'm not going to add 150%. No, I'm going to add 250% to really make the image pop like so. Wow, that just looks amazing. It's a little bit dark, but we're going to adjust that in a minute. So because this is a raw, I want to change the sharpness as well. Because raw images tend to be a little bit more soft than JPEGs. Because a JPEG is already being processed inside the camera. So let's close down the local contrast module. And let's just activate the sharper module. I'm not going to change anything. Let me open it to show you guys. So the radius is 2, the amount is 0 0.5 and the threshold is 0 0.5 as well. But that does sharpen the image a little bit. That's the only thing we're going to change about the sharper module. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the noise. So let me scroll in by scrolling the mouse wheel button away from me. And as you can see, the noise in this image is ridiculous. And I don't know why, because if you go to image information, you see that the ISO is only 200. So there shouldn't be a lot of noise, but there is. It's raw noise probably. So let me close this one down. And we're going to remove this by using the denoise module. I'm going to use the presets. So you've got the chroma used on first instance. You've got the luma used on second instance, which means we need two instances of the denoise module. So I'm going to click this one to activate the first one. So now you saw that the noise has already changed a little bit. And I'm going to click this symbol right here. Click new instance. And for that, I'm going to click this symbol and I'm going to use this one, luma, use on second. And now the noise that was in the image is gone. Let me show you guys before and after. So I'm going to click this uh, step right here, step eight for the sharper module. Now there's noise in the image. And after using the denoise profile module, the noise is gone, which looks absolutely amazing. So let's go back to fit the screen over here. There you go. And now what I want to do is I want to change the composition of this image. And for that, I'm going to use the crop and rotate module. So let's open that one up and I want to use the Instagram aspect ratio, which is four by five. If you don't have it over here at the aspect, what you can do is click this and then place it on four by five. And now you can change the image accordingly. So let me decrease the size a little bit. Let me recomposite the image. I think that looks pretty fine. Let me double click it. Let's see what happens. There you go. So now the mountains are in the middle, which is the subject of this image. What I want to do right now is because it's very dark, I want to use the exposure module. So let's open that one up. And I'm going to add, let's say, a half stop. 
So right mouse button 0.5 on the exposure. I'm not going to change the black level, but as I said before, if you don't have the basic adjustment module, you can change the black level over here, which we did by 0.02. So let me close it down. I can show you a before and after. So let me deactivate it. There you go. And now let me activate it. There you go. So now the image is a lot more brighter than it was before. But I'm going to make it pop a little bit more. And for that, I'm going to use the shadows and highlights module. So let's open that one up. And I am going to change uh, a little bit about these settings. But by just activating this module, these settings will be applied. And there you go. The image is already changed. I want to change the shadows a little bit more. So let's say we're going to put them on 60. Because we don't want to make it look artificial. If I drag this to the right, you will see that... Now it's starting to look very fake. I don't like how this looks. This is overdone, overprocessed. So let me put it back on 60%. But it was just for entertainment purposes. As you can see, this looks a lot better. I'm going to change another thing, which is the white point. And I'm going to drag it to the right a little bit, like so. Which just fairly brightens up the image just a little bit, but enough to see a difference. So let me show you guys a before and after. So I'm going to deactivate this module. There you go. So now this area is very dark. This area is dark as well. Now let me activate it. And those same areas are now being brightened up a little bit. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make the colors pop. Because it still looks a little bit dull if you ask me. So let me close down this module. Let me open up the Velvia module and let me activate it. The key here is I want to make it look like a drawing. So I want to exaggerate things. So I'm not going to put the strength on 25%. Nope. I'm going to put it on 100%. Boom. Now it's very popping. The sky is very blue. The grass is very green. Even the rocks became a lot more yellow like. And this really starts to look like a drawing. And there's one more thing that I want to do to make this image complete, which is use the tone curve module. So let me close down the Velvia module. Let me open up the tone curve module. And as you can see, it's the only module that's not activated right now. We did use the D mosaic, as you can see on the left side over here. So let's open up the tone curve module. Let's activate it. And I'm not going to make a S curve like so, in which you adjust the shadows and adjust the highlights to increase more contrast into the image. Instead, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to uh, up this point. So I'm going to brighten up the shadows a little bit. I'm going to place a point over here as well. I want to decrease the midtones a little bit like so. And I want to increase them over here. I want to increase some of the highlights as well. And let's see how that looks. And there you go. Now the image looks like it has been drawn, if you ask me. Let me close it down. Now let me show you guys a comparison with the snapshot that we've taken so first we need to take another snapshot i'm going to keep this on 17 i'm going to click this one 19 and there you go so this is the image that we've just edited and this is the image that we've taken a snapshot from before so i wanted to make it look like this and we did a great job so let me show you guys so the right side is what we did left side was what we wanted to do so that's awesome. Let me deselect the snapshot. Let me go back to this step right here, step 17. And now let me show you guys a before and after from the original. So I'm going to select the snapshot that we've just taken. I'm going to click the original. And this is the original image, which you can see is a photo. And if I move the slider to the right, da, 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 there you go. This is our new image. And I'm stoked how this image turned out. And I hope you guys like it as well. And that's it. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And I guess just, just one more. No, there's not. Two days ago, I've posted a picture. This picture that was just edited on my community page on YouTube. And I asked you guys, the first guy that knows where this image has been taken will get a shout out. I got one reply. Thank you very much. And he got it right the first time. His name is on YouTube. That is KJ. 3283W or basically I've got his Instagram so here's your shout out I'll put your Instagram down here I'll put it in a link in the description down below his Instagram is Amanu underscore Alex be sure to check him out like his photos say him I sent you uh, and now there's only one more thing left for me to say no there's not 
Be sure to check out my community page because I try to upload something every day, especially polls. And the reason why is because I really want to get to know my audience and what you guys would like to see. So two days ago, I uploaded a poll. What makes you come and visit my channel and what makes you watch my videos? I would really appreciate it if you answered that poll. I really hope to get a representative amount in combination with the subscribers that I have on my channel. So that way I can understand you guys better. I can offer you better content. I can play around with things that I'm going to do on my channel because like I said, a lot of things are going to change. You guys saw me change the banner already. You guys saw me change the profile photo and there's a lot more going to change. So please bear with me. Please stick with me. I appreciate all of you. And there's one more thing left for me to say right now, which is make love to the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that bell button to be the first to be notified when I drop in a video. And until next time, doei!